bogus. Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more of what I lie to you. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. This is Tony David Mitchell's bedtime storytelling. Sally Phillips' uncle, Rod Gilbert's. Yeah, dude, I just watched what I lied to you. The day was pretty short. It's like three minutes. I haven't even edited it yet. Uh, this might end up going up before that one because I haven't got around to editing the other one yet. And that's of course, I've edited out of order, but it was pretty short. It was another David Mitchell one. It was funny too. I always enjoyed the what I lie to you. This one looks like a normal length, like nine minutes. That's about what I expect with what I lie to you. Like six to 10 minutes or six to 12 minutes, something like that. The one I watched the other day was like three minutes, I think, three minutes, 30 seconds. So yeah, man, looking forward to this. I appreciate you guys recommending this one. Let's go ahead and jump into it and we'll talk about it more at the end. Please welcome this week's special guest, Tony. <laughs> welcome, Tony. Rod, what is Tony to you? Uh, this is Tony. And for five years, he was my badminton doubles partner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Sally, what is your relationship with Tony? This is my uncle Tony, and last year I asked to have a go on his mobility scooter, and I drove it into a pond and wrote it off. Right. <laughs> Finally, David, uh, how do you know Tony? Uh, this is Tony, and when I was little, he used to help me get to sleep by telling me bedtime stories about the war. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? There we are. So, uh, Rod's bad. That actually sounds most believable. Uncle or David's bedtime storyteller. Lee, before you start asking, I'm going to bring a chair on for you, and uh, you can have a lovely sit down there. <laughs> there we are. You relax right. there. Uh, Lee, Sally, does he use the mobility scooter a lot? Um, quite does... a lot. He's he's had two hip replacements. So he can get by without the... The, the fact that he walked yes. on fire tonight yeah, is... Sure. He, he didn't struggle to step up there, though, so people, maybe... You know, maybe her is true. I a door. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice. That was more a DIY mishap, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice to step <laughs> over the door, step in, wait for 19 or 20 minutes while it slowly fills up <laughs> in the freezing cold. I think it's lovely. Why did you take the mobility scooter in the first place? Because I was going to play a psychopath in a film, or a psychopath on a mobility scooter. <laughs> and right. I said, can I have a go? Because I can't drive a car. Sally, how far did you drive before you went into the pond? I what was the distance? Know. I didn't know I had it in reverse. <laughs> So you were very close thing. to the pond. So I wasn't far from the pond, but it was facing that way. Right. And, and I took it out of park <laughs> the wrong way and went backwards. Oh, was your the uncle pond. with you at the time? Yes. yes How much was. instruction did Tony give you before you got on the mobility scooter? <laughs> well, that he thought, as he said afterwards over tea many, many times, that it was quite self evident how one drove this thing. <laughs> he said <laughs> all it had was, a, it's got a little, you know, gear tiller, and he thought that even a nincompoop... Backwards or forwards, that's about it. Did you it. say gear tiller? Yes, well... <laughs> that's, that's a nautical expression. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it made you obviously felt, on some subconscious level, more comfortable at sea. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy your uncle Tony oh, no. another a good mobility scooter? Did How much did? was that mobility scooter? <laughs> Yes, how much was that mobility scooter? It was £1,500. For a brand new mobility scooter? For a brand new one. Yes, because it... Hang yes. on, is that right, that... Des? <laughs> <laughs> Bogus. <laughs> Should we move on to Rob? No. How long ago were they that you were playing badminton as doubles? That we were doubles partners? Yes. How many years 10, ago? 10, 15 years? You were doubles... And when did this end? <laughs> when did this end? We had to stop because, uh well, I was getting on a bit. <laughs> and how did your partnership begin? Well, we played for the same club. What was the club called? Um... <laughs> <laughs> it was in West London. <laughs> West London. He's got a really bad a line of pretending to be bad a line to call them all. Old Actonians. Old Actonians Babington Club. Well, yes. Did you wear the full gear, short shorts and, you know, look... No, I wore a miner's helmet and he wore a frogman's outfit. <laughs> 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 did you ever win anything yourself and we Tony? we uh, we won a, a lot yeah and why did you come about playing together then why didn't you go for someone no disrespect to Tony why don't you go for someone a bit because more... we complimented each other's game when you say you complimented each other's game you went you're good so are you come on <laughs> <laughs> out of you two better <laughs> players Rod what would you say was the, no. the better Tony, Tony was a much much better player than me Tony played uh, for England <laughs> 
started out, you were just knocking you around. Now, hold it now he is the Rafael Nadal of badminton. <laughs> If he played for England yeah. and he was so good, yeah. why is he choosing you to partner him? I think it would be fair, and Tony wouldn't mind me saying that he, when I played with him, he'd have been probably in his, I think he was in his early 70s. Whoa, he, whoa, whoa, when you were playing with him? When I was playing with him, yeah. OK. The prime age for badminton. <laughs> <laughs> particularly at international level. <laughs> OK, David, what's your connection with Tony? What's your he, he lived next door when I was little. And he read your bedtime stories? He would occasionally babysit for me and my brother and... It's feasible. Made it up or was it... He, this was just his no, stories from the war? Not out of a book, right. but uh, ostensibly true. Did he ever just shout them through yes, the wall? We were surrounded by Germans and so, basically... <laughs> I'm trying to get to sleep. I don't care! <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I, I, th I think I would have been... 23. <laughs> <laughs> Around the time I was sort of five, six, seven, that sort of. It could happen. I had another neighbour who would sing me nursery rhymes and bounce me on the knee. And Am I the only one who had parents? Yeah. Well, what's <laughs> going on? <there? laughs> I think perhaps what it was, Lee, with you is that your parents found it very hard to find any other adult <laughs> who was willing to take sole responsibility for you. <laughs> now, let me ask you this: Would would Tony ever come round? not for babysitting, but just to tell you some of these stories? Or would it only happen when he was babysitting? I think it started when he was babysitting, but he'd come round quite a bit anyway with my oh. parents. <laughs> David, you just, you just did an upwards inflection. I've never heard you do that before. <laughs> did, did That's I, so well, not well, like you. Right? <laughs> Sometimes he would come yeah. round anyway. <laughs> What's happened to you? I'm, look, I'm just... I'm on national television, I'm getting a bit defensive about talking about my abuse-ridden childhood. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the war stories that he told you, that helped you go to sleep. Yeah. What would you say was your favourite? <laughs> well, I think the thing that I found most interesting was the story Tony told about his mother, who, during the war, worked in the um, library in Oxford. This is the interesting one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what she had so to do bogus. was they had to compile and analyse and place photographs of the Japanese coastline. I'd say what, it's getting better, carry on. <laughs> in preparation for an invasion of Japan. And you said, thank you, as a five-year-old, I mean, that's very interesting. <laughs> no, because by the end of the story, I was asleep. <laughs> it's time for an answer, Lee. Uh, so, is Tony... So I'm still trying to get the idea we had of just passing David's door here in a manic cycle. <laughs> I mean, obviously, with the coastal uh, line off Tokyo, it's very hard to determine whether we should have a land invasion or by... Uh, oh, oh, you're asleep. Oh, OK. <laughs> Right. Right. Tight. Don't let the Japanese invade. <laughs> I think it's rather than we can discount. There were well, too many flaws. I agree with you. I think it's one of the other two. I got a horrible. I'm going with David. I, I still, even from the beginning, I feel like it's David's story. And it's probably just because watching, you know, Peep Show, and he was so into like history and all that jazz and that show, and he seems to know a decent amount on here when he remakes jokes and such. So it seems feasible, but I could be wrong. Was, let's just go back into it and see if I'm right. Probably <laughs> that it's David in the middle there. Yeah, I'm going with David. I know which one David is. <laughs> 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 all right, what about the mobility scooter with Sally? Have you ever taken your driving test? Yeah, I fight with them all the time. No, I've never even taken it. <laughs> never learned to drive. <laughs> you can't emphasize the word even if it's the same thing. Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever taken your driving test? I've not even taken it. <laughs> So Lee's team, is Tony uh, Rod's badminton buddy, Sally's scooterless uncle, or David's bedtime storyteller? What are you going to say? It's not Rod. <laughs> it is. That's what are you going for? Sally. Sa Sally. D I think David. And in a weird way, I've now gone back to Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can see it in his little Welsh eyes. <laughs> in his little devious Welsh eyes. <laughs> Trust me, if there's one no. thing I know about working on this show, it's a little devious Welsh eye. <laughs> Rod or Sally? Or Sally? It's Sally. <clears throat> Sally? Yeah, it's Sally. It's Sally. Sally. Sorry. Right. Tony, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Tony, and Rod was my badminton what? partner. For oh, my God, really? Oh, my God. He just... Oh, bogus. <laughs> oh, crap. He did a good job. Rod's badminton doubles partner. Tony, thank you very much. Well, thank you.
Jesus Christ, man. He did a really good job. Dang, dude, that's crazy. He did a good job lying. I even said that. Like, he's either pretending to be really bad at telling the story, so he, to throw you off a little bit, or he's just lying. Uh, I know it's not like a super aggressive sport, but it still takes some movement. He struggled to get up the thing when he was coming up the stairs. They give him a chair to sit down. He looks rough and old. I'm like, dude, there's no way this dude was playing Batman. And that dude was telling the truth, man. God bless him. I thought it'd be David. I think Peep Show got me. That's why. Because as I said, you know, in the show, he was so into, like, history and all that. And even on here, he, like, makes, like, references to history and stuff and jokes. I don't know. I'm surprised. I get these wrong so often. I lose so much. I think I've only won, like, two or three times. And I've done, I think, 13 or 14 of these, maybe more. So I suck at these anyway. But, hey, what can you do? You can't win them all. You can't win them all. All right, folks, man. That is it. That is all for this one. Uh, hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.